Today, we are very happy to have four amazing speakers with us who talk, uh, they will talk about how they are using business to drive positive change in Austria, Croatia, Bulgaria, and Turkey. But before we kick off, I would like to introduce ourselves. Uh, my amazing colleagues, Sarah and Nico, will shortly introduce themselves in a bit. But uh, together, the three of us, we formed the market development team at BLAP Europe. And the main aim of this team is to support the growth of the movement in regions where we don't have a local representation yet. And my name is Helena Birgusova. I'm the senior market development coordinator, and I mainly focus on uh, community engagement aspect. And it's uh, my pleasure and honor to host uh, this panel today. On the next slide, uh, we will just give you a little bit of insight into what the next hour will look like and how we'll spend it together. So we will kick off with a short introduction to the B Corp movement for those of you who might not have heard about the movement before. Then uh, we'll, we will hear from uh, the four B Corp speakers and they will share a bit more about their organizations and also their uh, B Corp um, journey, challenges they might have uh, tackled and also uh, some of the impact areas they are excelling at. And later we'll move to panel. There we will also have uh, three questions together and one of them will be from the audience. So please share any questions you might have in the chat and we might ask them um, later to the speakers. And lastly, we will also share some additional information and tools and resources that you might find uh, beneficial. But before we kick off, I would like to pass it to my uh, colleague Nico, who will briefly tell us a bit more what actually the Beaker movement is all about. So Nico. Thank you so much, Helena. And thank you everyone who is joining today for this celebration. Before we get to the really interesting part and listen from our beloved B Corps, I'll give you a very brief introduction to the B Corp movement for those of you who may be new to it. Our vision as an organization, as B Lab, or as a network of organizations across the globe, is an inclusive, equitable, and regenerative economic system for all people and the planet. It's an ambitious vision, almost utopian, some could say. But I can tell you that slowly but surely we are getting there and listening to B Corps like the ones we're listening to today gives us inspiration and a lot of strength to continue our work. With an audience like the one we have today, it's probably not necessary to make a pause and remind ourselves why we're here today. But we, B Lab started in a context where more and more people were realizing that our current economic system is creating significant negative impacts and for good or bad business is a part of those negative impacts oftentimes. The good thing is that more and more citizens are realizing the connection between the behavior of business and these challenges that we are facing and are demanding change and also more and more people and more and more citizens are enabling opportunities for companies that are listening to them and that are learning to collaborate with each other and see what role they can play in addressing these global challenges. Society expects better of business, it's clear. A report from Edelman from 2021 shows that 86% of people expect CEOs to lead on societal issues 68% of people expect CEOs to step in when government does not fix societal problems. And also more than half uh, of, of all people believe that CEOs should hold themselves accountable to the public as well as to the board of directors or shareholders. Now, the statistics may be slightly different in your local reality, but I have a question for you, which is whether your CEO is leading on societal issues? Is your company stepping in when government doesn't fix societal problems? Is your company holding itself accountable to the public? Ask yourself. Some people believe that we are going through a transition and surely B-Lab emerges and the Beaker movement emerges in this transition from shareholder capitalism to stakeholder capitalism. And some people believe that we're going through a transition in which capitalism used to be the value that was created 
was almost ex exclusive to the shareholders of companies. It was often prioritized, decisions were often made in the short term, leading to consumerism. And this economic activity was extractive of the ecosystems where it took place. But more and more of us think that we're transi transitioning to a form of capitalism where the value created is shared more inclusive. More inclusively, the value is created for the long term. There is an expectation and citizens have more and more tools to see whether this is true or not, that value is created for the long term. And in the process, hopefully, it is being regenerative of the ecosystems where it takes place, not just the natural ecosystems, but also the social ecosystems. And the B Impact Assessment is the main tool that all of the B Corps that we'll be presenting today uh, have been using. It's a free, a completely free online tool that looks at success across five different impact areas. And those are workers, environment, customers, community, and governance. The reason why we show this on screen is also because the companies that you will be listening today in this panel, they excel at different impact areas and we will be learning from that. And this is how the process of certification looks like for companies that use the B Impact Assessment but want to get go one step beyond and pursue certification. That is something completely optional, but this is, the, in summary, the process that the B Corps will be listening to today have gone through. They completed the assessment, achieving more than 80 points. They, they got a verification by an analyst. They announced it, celebrated it, made it official. Depending on the country, B-Lab often requires that um, companies change their articles of association or constitution and then pay a certification fee, which is also a part of uh, the B Corp certification. There is a growing community of more than 8,000 certified B Corps in more than 160 industries, more than 90 countries now, and one unifying goal. And across Europe, there are 40 B Corps in countries where we are their direct point of contact. So B Lab Europe is, let's say, their local B Lab. And we are very, very happy to uh, support these companies and really learn from them every day. In the broader map of Europe, uh, there are almost 1,800 B Corps now, and we're actually a network of country partners with different local B Labs and plenty of room for learning from each other and also for collaboration. There's just These are just a, a few uh, glimpses of recent events in some of these countries that we were uh, had the honor to participate in. And without further ado, I want to uh, really listen to the companies that uh, have joined us today. Helena, who is joining us today? Thank you so much, Nico. Well, we are very lucky because we have very diverse panel. Uh, which is very nice that we have companies from different regions, different sectors, also different sizes. Uh, also, each of them, they actually become uh, became certified in different uh, times. So all this is really proving that the B Corp movement is inclusive of all types of organizations uh, demonstrating impactful journeys. And each of them, they, presented, they prepared uh, for you a five-minute presentation where they will go through their impact journey, also the motivation why they become a B Corp, what were some of the challenges, and also we ask each of them to focus on a different impact area because we have each of them are the, uh, excelling a different one. So it will be also nice to hear uh, about some of the best practices from them. So without further ado, I would like to ask uh, Sarah, who is the founder of Mikado Sustainable Development Consulting um, based in Turkey, if you could uh, share, start sharing uh, with our uh, audience what Mikado is all about. Of course, thank you first uh, for the invitation. Uh, I'm proud to be a B Corp. I'm trying to be here with all of you. Uh, I will try to share our journey. Uh, if we can continue with the slides. Uh, so Mikado is a social enterprise uh, founded 17 years ago that crafts models uh, for sustainable development. Uh, it's like a hub, a, a catalyst, uh, and it, it crafts a development programs and, and mainly targeting uh, corporations, companies, but also participants 
uh, in the society and uh, social impact, open innovation, sustainability and stakeholder engagement are the four main pillars of our intervention design. And it's been more it's been 17 years, so we have developed many, many different programs. Uh, I'm also an Ashoka Fellow, and uh, we have we also have uh, established an NGO, an association to be able to uh, increase our impact. Uh, we can continue. And we were certified in September 2012, and we became the first B Corp in Turkey. And I recently learned that we are right now the oldest active uh, B Corp in, in Europe. Uh, and actually, everything starts with an email. Uh, I just uh, I I read about the, the the B Corp movement in an article, and I sent an email to the initiators in the U.S. and I received the, a really welcoming message saying that uh, they are very pleased that there's interest from Europe. And when I explained, and I was actually sending an email just to uh, be part of the movement and. Uh, and try to uh, try to promote it in in Turkey, but they said that the company Mikado itself is actually creating impact and it, it really fits very much with the uh, with the concept and with the movement. So they said that why don't you try first becoming a B Corp yourself? So then we tried uh, we start with the team doing the impact assessment, uh, which we were actually familiar because we are already working on sustainability and uh, KPIs on. The, sustainability indicators so it wasn't a big deal but because we are like a hub and we're not a, a manufacturing company some uh, parts of the impact assessment weren't uh, so relevant for our work but still uh, we had a very good score and the first two, uh, few years we we were selected as one of the best for the world uh, companies which I, I loved actually that uh, uh, the way B Corp puts it, and best for the world. I'm doing a business which is very good for the world and for the future of the world. So uh, it was really nice, and we try to use it as much as possible. So uh, the B Corp certification became really part of our identity, and uh, it brought us recognition and reputation, even though people didn't know much about it, you know, like 10 years ago. But with time, it the uh, the network grew and uh, people started to, uh, wanting to know more about the, the movement. For our team, it was a motivation. I think we we did it three times the impact assessment, or maybe four times. Uh, you know, it helped us increase our in internal capacity. You know, uh, because each time we were doing the impact assessment, the uh, assessment itself was becoming more uh, comprehensive and in more detailed, more KPIs. So uh, and the cases they were sharing. Uh, the B Corp is, is sharing are really great. So it supported our work at the same time. And many people from abroad uh, contacted me. Uh, so it also enabled partnerships uh, to do work together. Um, and it it's always encourages us and challenges us uh, to do better in a nutshell. Uh, so customer side is actually where we are good at, at the B Corp. Uh, impact assessment and customers are organizations, companies, institutions, universities, but also the participants of our projects. I just wanted to share a few of our project uh, projects in the upcoming slides. Uh, so the Future is Brighter Youth Platform is a, is a spin-off from Mikado, uh, which uh, I was I established at the same time. It's an online vocational orientation platform, a counseling platform for young people. Uh, and this platform, I became an Ashoka Fellow with this initiative, and this initiative actually uh, uh, made possible another initiative in the next slide, which is called Embark, uh, for refugee youngsters, the Embark project, and with Hello Europe Ashoka's initiative, uh, you know, it, it became a very good example because we are doing a reverse mentoring, including engaging refugees and newcomers. Uh, we did it in Turkey, we piloted it in Turkey, and then we started doing it in Europe with uh, different companies. And now, in the upcoming years, we uh, and from this year on, we will be scaling it and replicating the model uh, to Europe uh, because, you know, the refugee numbers are increasing and, and youth unemployment among refugees is also higher. So, you know, the know-how we have uh, that we have created uh, through our work with our customers, actually, 
uh, enabled us to uh, excel and uh, develop models so that now we are we came to a stage to replicate that. Uh, I have, I think, a last slide, maybe. Yes, uh, now we are at the stage of scaling, first to Netherlands and hopefully uh, to other countries. Uh, and I was part of Ashoka's Globalizer program a few years ago, and I tried to uh, scale and replicate the Futures Writer platform first, which wasn't so easy. But this time with Embark, it's more concrete and it's a, like a framework of a program. So hopefully this time we will make it. And we are establishing Mikado Impact BV company right now. So thank you, B Corp, for uh, being there for us. And this network is also big. Uh, is, uh, you know, is encouraging and uh, supporting us. Uh, it's good to be part of it. So I, I think I should be fine by you right now. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Sarah. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to put it in the chat. And uh, during the panel, we can ask that question. And the next speaker is uh, Domagoj Boljar, co-founder and CEO at uh, Earthbound. And actually, it's very nice uh, in comparison with Mikado, who has been certified so many, so many years. Then uh, Earthbound has been certified only a few months ago and already been very engaged. So Domagoj, if you can also share a bit uh, with us. Uh, thank you. So I'm Domagoj, the co-founder of Earthbound Sneakers, if I can get the first slide. Please. Uh, so uh, we set about on a journey in 2015 to to completely redefine how shoes are made and how shoes are consumed, because we were industry insiders. My brother and, and myself, we were developing high-end luxury sneakers for French and Dutch fashion brands, and we had the opportunity to see the industry from the inside and see all the ter terrible ways that it impacts the environment from the production side but also from the consumer side and we set about an mission to 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 be the ones who change this uh, so we created radically ecological sneakers uh, next slide please so what does it mean to be radically ecological it means that it uh, means that uh, each and every single decision that we make on product design has to go through our radical filter of of being uh, being as close to nature as po as possible so our sneakers are 97 97% made from natural materials sourced in europe and new zealand and and ethically produced in europe uh, next slide please uh, so uh, we are a direct-to-consumer brand and we sell our products uh, via e-commerce all, all around the world. So uh, from one side, we need to be ecological, but from the other side, we need to be fashionable. So we try to bring color to sustainability. Next slide, please. Uh, so uh, when when uh, when communicating co to consumers, it, it's really important to be as honest as humanly possible as and as scientific as humanly possible. Uh, uh, so uh, and and for us, it was really really important to to eliminate all greenwashing uh, that that we could. So we set about on a journey to certify our products. And the first certificate that we obtained is being Ecotech certified, which means that we are the first sneaker in the world that's completely safe to human health but human health was not our primary pillar our primary pillar was always ecology next slide please uh so um, the next step that we took was measuring our CO2 emissions, and there, there we could scientifically prove that our our sneakers are also really uh, light on our uh, on the carbon footprint. But none of these really, really resonated with what we wanted to do. And what we wanted to do is to have an independent third party certification that our mission and our messaging are honest and are true. So next slide, please. We set about on uh, certifying as a B Corp. We started this journey two and a half years ago from a country that had no precedent in this, but we we were sure that this is the only way that we can, on one side, communicate our brand and communicate our values as precise as possible, but also to protect our mission because as a startup that uh, that gets investment and investors could bring at one point pressure to really de-radicalize our mission 
uh, we we saw this as as the perfect opportunity to set the mission in stone. And this is why we went on this really, really long and tough journey, almost two and a half, to almost two and a half years, uh, to become a B Core. What we didn't know is that we uh, what we were not expecting is that it's not just a cert certificate. It's it's a framework of really moving forward and not being stuck in one moment in your company, but also that we are joining a movement and that this movement has a strong community. And in these three months uh, of being part of this community, uh, we see this on every step. And we see that not just the B Corp movement uh, stakeholders uh, view us as part of their own, but that this is this was the pivotal moment where where we are now getting the international exposure that we otherwise could not get. So B Corp as a seal of approval and B Corp as a movement is what really uh, it brought us value beyond what we expected. Thank you. Thank you so much, Demagoy. Uh, the next speaker is Hester Gertrell, Chief Inspector Officer and Interim Director at Humans in the Loop. And uh, we'll hear from her, and she will also focus on the impact area of workers, which is very interesting. So Hester, if you are ready, you can take it yes, on. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction. Yes, my name is Hester Gartrell and I'm the Interim Director and Chief Impact Officer of Humans in the Loop. Uh, so what is our mission at Humans in the Loop? Well, there are over 114 million people worldwide who are forcibly displaced. And when people are forcibly displaced, they often are forced to take jobs that are unsafe, unstable, that do not meet a living wage. And uh, this is where the Humans in the Loop solution comes on. So as you can see in our next slide, uh, while there are 114 people who are currently displaced, 97 million new jobs will be created thanks to AI. And Humans in the Loop is a social enterprise that brings together AI annotation and also people who have been affected by conflict. And what we do is we deliver really high quality annotation services, providing support and a workforce for large and small tech companies to build AI models. And um, Really, at the heart of our mission is to provide work and very vulnerable community. And we are primarily focusing on three areas, which you can see in the next slide, uh, which are data set collection, data set annotation, and model validation. So perhaps if you're not in the AI sphere, you're thinking, Hester, what are you talking about? Uh, please, if you go to the next slide, I can show you a little bit about what that looks like in action. So annotation in action is essentially the labeling of pictures or videos. It can also be a labeling of text. And with this, we teach the computer how to recognize images, how to recognize words, um, and with this, we can build automated computer models. So why did we choose annotation and why do we feel that it's such an important part of our business? It's because it can open up the global digital economy, but at the same time, it's a very easily trainable skill. And so it enables us to open up work to people who perhaps have no experience in the digital world. And with this, uh, we are able to reach the most vulnerable groups. Can we go to the next slide, please? So we use a unique impact sourcing model at Humans in the Loop, and it means that we can work across many regions of the world, often where traditional businesses are not willing to enter. So we currently have teams in Bulgaria, in Lebanon, in Syria, in Turkey, Iraq, uh, Afghanistan, and also in uh, Kenya. And um, as you can see, some of these areas are currently unstable, uh, there are difficulties for those people, especially people who've been displaced to find work. And so by working with NGO partners, we're able to open up good quality uh, and uh, a good workplace to people who are displaced, refugees, but also people who are currently in conflict affected areas. Okay, next slide, please. Thank you. Sorry. So why B Corp certification? For us, B Corp certi certification was really a no brainer for us because social impact is central to our mission. We were certified just last year. And here you can see a picture of our B Corp community. 
And as has already been said, one of our big focuses and uh, one of the things that we really feel we're very strong at is work impact. Uh, the B Corp journey really allowed us to improve our practices as a young organization, especially around environment and governance. We found this really, really important and really useful. And we implemented a number of new practices around profit sharing, around performance reviews. And um, let's go forward to our, our next slide. Uh, two slides, please. Thank you. And the next one. Thank you. Uh, so really our best practice area for in terms of B Corps is our worker impact. So we're providing fair work for chronically underemployed populations while offering a great service in annotation. And so far we've provided over a thousand people with work, 48% of whom are women. And we've distributed over 1.4 million euros in salaries to people who often struggle to find work, who often have to support families and uh, who while often highly qualified, find it difficult to find work due to their status. In addition to having this focus on providing work to people who are chronically unemployed, we also have a number of practices that ensure that Humans in the Loop is a good place to work. So I'll quickly go through these in the next four slides. So uh, number one of these is uh, we really try to support our community with taxation and social benefit support. Uh, for example, our team in Bulgaria is supported to apply for uh, things such as uh, tax benefits related to having children under 18 and we provide information in all of our community languages and also we provide one-to-one -one support uh, really holding people's hands to ensure that they are submitting their income and that they are uh, legally working within the tax system and they receive the benefits that they deserve. Uh, in addition to this uh, on the next slide, one of the additional things we do is we have an advisory board which is made up of our workers that meets monthly and is paid to meet monthly um, and which provides us a review of all of our strategies and all of our um, decisions as a company. Uh, thirdly, one of the things that we do, as you can see on the next slide, is provide a healthcare fund so that uh, people who are facing difficulties in paying for healthcare treatment in exceptional circumstances can access health insurance or uh, healthcare support from Humans in the Loop. This is specifically relevant for many of our communities who, due to their status and the country that they're based in, uh, they may not necessarily have access to national healthcare services. Uh, and finally, uh, the other thing that we really focus on at Humans in the Loop and something that is really central to our work is that we have a full suite of training opportunities for our workers. So uh, we have a training platform where people can take self-paced courses, but we also run instructor-led courses in English, uh, advanced IT, beginner IT skills. And this is really uh, why at Humans in the Loop, we have such a great worker impact score. Of course, there are areas we can improve of, proven other areas, but we are really dedicated to our community and ensure that there's a wide range of support available for them. So thank you very much. And uh, yeah, looking forward to handing over to the next speaker. Thank you so much, uh, Hester, for sharing so many best practices in the worker, in, uh, worker impact area. It's truly really inspiring. Well, last and not, but definitely not least, uh, we have Max, um, who is head of corporate affairs in uh, Danone in Austria and who will also share some best practices in the impact area governance. So Max, uh, the floor is Thank yours. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me today. Um, yeah, as you said, my name is Max. Uh, I oversee corporate affairs for Danone in Austria. Uh, you can skip the first uh, fancy corporate slide. We go to the next one. Um, I guess everyone in the room has probably heard about Danone at some point. Um, so I keep this rather short. Um, Danone is active in four segments, early life nutrition, medical nutrition, essential dairy, plant-based products, and waters. Um, our brand portfolio, I guess you also have seen in your countries, in your markets, uh, include both international brands that we have everywhere, but also very uh, traditional local brands um, um, that have uh, local heritage as well and, and are really born out of the, the countries. Um, we are really big. So we, I'm trying to bring in the, the multinational perspective a little bit into this panel. We have around 100,000 employees globally um, and are also active in more than 120 countries worldwide where you can find our products. 
Um, our headquarters are based in Paris, as we are a French company originally. Um, you can go to the next slide, exactly. So this one is the reason I'm here today and I'm talking to you. Um, since last year, Danone is 100% B Corp certified within the DACH area. DACH meaning Germany, Austria and Switzerland. Um, and this is obviously something we are uh, immensely proud of, uh, as it's also a result of a journey that took us uh, nearly 10 years, actually. Um, but yeah, it's a journey. And as you all know, this journey, specific journey is never over. Uh, it's about continuous improvement. It's about getting better. So um, at the moment, while I'm speaking to you, we are actually already kicking off the, the recertification um, process of our entire DAC business. Uh, and we're aiming to be done with that by end of next year. So, so it won't get any boring. Um, yeah, I'm happy that I got the chance to contribute today to the panel. Um, and also, as I said, to add some perspectives of a multinational company on B Corp. On the next slide, you can also see our big ambition. Um, and actually, Danone aims to be one of the first multinationals to be 100% B Corp certified on a global scale uh, by next year. Um, and I heard that, that we are very uh, well on track also to reach this goal. Um, at this point of time, already roughly 75% of our global net sales are generated through B Corp certified business entities. Um, yeah, and we at Danone, we consider B Corp uh, and the B Corp certification as a great symbol of trust, but we also think um, it's in our responsibility to use our size, uh, you know, our influence, our network, um, use it to really help giving the B Corp mo mo movement um, a bigger platform and to increase awareness across various audiences in various markets. So from trade partners to business partners, uh, public stakeholders, uh, consumers. You can go to the next slide. So I also wanted just quickly to, to add some context on how Danone and B Corp fit together, because this is obviously a question that's, that is being raised quite often. So as you can see on this slide, you can't really read the text. It's quite small, but it's not that important for now. Uh, but it's our sustainability strategy. It's very clear, very ambitious. It's called the Danone Impact Journey. Uh, and our impact journey is basically based on three pillars. Uh, one pillar is health, uh, one pillar is nature, and the other pillar is people and communities. Um, that means for us that sustainability actually has several dimensions. So on the one side, there's ecological sustainability. Um, we have economical sustainability, but we also have social sustainability. And here you can already see some uh, similarities also to the, to the B Corp uh, impact areas. So for each of those pillars, we also obviously have to find a set of priorities, specific objectives. Uh, we're working with third party to endorse those objectives. Um, and we are really focusing on where we as a company can um, deliver the most impact and value. Um, as you might be able to see in the middle of that wheel, uh, the group certification is actually at the center of everything we do here. So it basically serves us as a framework um, but also as a catalyst that drives us um, to challenge the status quo, to challenge how we do things and to continuously do better as a business. And then on the next slide, um, Sarah and the team asked me to, to talk a little bit about the governance area today, the governance impact area, because Danone is doing quite well here as a company. Um, and I took one example, we have many, but uh, one of our biggest proof points uh, in this area is our Societe à Mission status. So you would ask now, what is Societe à Mission? Uh, as a Societe à Mission, you have a specific legal framework, um, and, and this framework uh, is basically a commitment for businesses to include social and sustainability goals, environmental goals, into uh, their statutes or in-laws. Um, in 2020, Danone became the first listed company actually to ever adopt this status. It's legally binding, and the achievement of those objectives is to be verified um, by an independent uh, third party organization, a committee with different independent people. So we have someone in there from the World Trade Organization, we have someone in there from UNESCO, um, former politicians, former uh, ministers. Um, and, and they really um, uh, verify the, the uh, achievements. Um, 
our objectives are, are closely aligned also with the United Nations SDGs. Um, they cover four dimensions that you can see on, on the bottom of the slide. So first, uh, our ambition is to impact people's health locally, uh, maybe with a portfolio of healthier products or by encouraging better nutritional choices. Um, the second one, a uh, very important one, preserve and renew the planet's resources because we are a company that works with the planet's resources. So it's really about supporting regenerative agriculture, um, protecting uh, the water cycle, strengthening circular economy of our packaging, uh, etc. The third one is more the social dimension. Um, we want to entrust the non people um, uh, where the governance topic also comes into play. So for example, we uh, every Danone employee is also a shareholder of the committee uh, of the company, um, which gives them the opportunity to impact the decisions of the company uh, locally and globally. Um, and last but not least, also very important nowadays, um, uh, not just nowadays, but increasingly important, uh, considering uh, a lot of developments at the moment, um, fostering inclusive growth. So we really want to ensure equal opportunities within the company and we want to foster inclusive diversity. Um, I want to close this with a saying that we have uh, at Danone, which might sound a bit cheesy, but there's a lot of truth in it. Uh, and we always say we believe that each time we eat and drink, we can actually vote for the world we want to live in. Um, so our ambition is really to unite sustainability and performance to continue to grow our impact. Um, and for us, sustainability without performance has no impact um, and, and performance the other way around without sustainability has no future. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sarah, Demagoge, Hester, uh, Max, for these inspiring presentations. And I think um, one of the most incredible things about this movement are just opportunities like this one to sit at a table with a Turkish sustainability consulting firm, a Croatian sneaker company, a Bulgarian AI company, and an Austrian leader of a French global food multinational, all kind of united under this common purpose of leveraging the power of business to drive transformational change. So um, just really appreciative of your openness to sharing your journey with us. One of the things that we'd love to ask is, you know, now that we've had a chance to get a glimpse of, of your inspiring work in each of your sectors, uh, we'd love to dig deeper uh, for those in the audience who are wondering, you know, what does it really take to implement the changes and initiatives that you've, sh that you've just shared? So We've heard some of the great opportunities that adopting the B Corp framework has brought to each of your businesses, but would you be open to share, because we're really curious to know, what were the more difficult aspects uh, or challenges that you had to overcome to get where, where you are today? Who, who's first? Anyone that would like to start? Yeah, since... Go, Sarah. Ah, okay, okay, thank you. Uh, in my case, being a, a company and having an NGO at the same time and doing uh, hybrid work uh, was a challenge, answering the questions and trying to uh, leverage what we do. And uh, I mean, that was a, a big challenge. And also, uh, I mean, not producing, not having a manufacturing site also was a, a challenge at the very beginning, especially because the DBIA wasn't uh, uh, as mature as today's uh, at its first uh, years. Uh, but with time, uh, it, it got easier because there were different options you could choose for yourself. Um, but uh, um, the challenge was that, you know, uh, we are kind of unique as a company. You know, we're not a company, we're not an NGO, we are a social enterprise, and we try to fit in. So that was a, my biggest challenge. I have to pick up from Sarah to say I also echo because we are the same model as you, uh, Sarah. We are a company and an NGO. And for us, uh, we do a lot of impact focused work under our NGO, but that can't be counted in our B Corp company status uh, uh, that easily. And so we had to very clearly define what do we do in the company to support work impact and what do we do in the foundation? And we work very closely together, those two entities. So dividing that was challenging. Uh, in addition to that, I think we have a slightly unusual structure as well in terms of our 
workforce. Most of our workers are working for us as freelancers or part time. And because of this, it was also quite challenging for us sometimes when uh, answering the workers impact questions and uh, thinking about equivalent of full time and things like this. I think that's the great thing, like you said, about fee corporations. There are so many different types of fee corporations, but we have to have standard questions in order for the certification to be done. And so I think that probably every B Corp faces some challenges when certifying, but their, in, their kind of unique model or the way that they work uh, has to be expressed through standard questions. And that's why it's so good to be able to have also a conversation with those at B Lab and to have personalized support in addition to just uh, submitting the form that definitely helped us in our journey. For us, it's it was the most challenging thing was that we were pioneers and we couldn't like really, really talk to anyone who already went through the process. And the other thing is, was that we are a startup, we're a small company that has a lot of partners and suppliers. We are tiny, our suppliers are huge, and we need to we needed to obtain huge amounts of data in order to to do our LCA and our, C our CO2 emission calculation and all the supporting documents. And certification that were uh, later the foundation for B Corp certification. So it was a lot of a lot of man hours, a lot of persistence for a small team that should basically focus on sales and stuff like that. But we we uh, we, we had to uh, to find a common common ground with our investors and all the stakeholders that that this is really something that we are want to pursue now and rather sooner rather than later. Yeah, and if I can close and then build on this, for us it's actually quite similar. But uh, for us, um, you, uh, you said right, it's a small business, grassroots business. For us, it's it's our size. We're a huge business, which makes uh, things very complex. Sometimes also quite slow. Um, you know, we're not that agile. Um, uh, we're a very big business. We have a lot of complexities in our structure, in our stakeholder landscape. Uh, our supply chains are very complex. Um, and, and as I said earlier already, we started the B Corp journey 10, 10 years ago, actually, where we had the first uh, touch point with the movement and with B Lab. Um, and yeah, it just requires a lot of time, effort, um, and, and also strong commitment uh, across the entire organization. And we're a big organization. Um, so I put out some numbers um, uh, just to give you an example. So only for the DAF area, Germany, Austria, Switzerland. Um, when we did the first BIA, we had five different legal units, business units, and two factories, um, and we had to do the BIA for all of these units. And uh, my colleagues told me, who are actually working in depth with the with the uh, certification in the BIA, that per business units you can calculate 500 working hours, uh, 12 employees in a task force full time for 10 months. Um, and now you can multiply this with uh, five or six and then you get a very high number. Um, so yeah, I think we, we have probably have, have uh, similar um, challenges in that regard. It's also what you said, um, uh, convincing a lot of stakeholders internally um, to, to maybe not only look at the core business, but to also have a look what's around that, what's, you know, well, how, how does the future look like? Um, how we how can we add purpose how can we um, bundle everything that we do in in, in terms of um, sustainability and the dimension for sustainability so i think it's quite quite similar but uh, on a different scale thank you all i think interestingly all of you guys have tapped into into this really interesting kind of uh, dynamic of the b corp movement which is its strength and its challenge right like we what the b corp movement tries to do is to create a similar language across industries across borders uh while, but at the same time that creates complexity of course and so that's where um the standards really need to be complemented with additional guidance um, and I think a really important aspect of that, of course, is, is the support that, B, that B Lab can provide. But I also really encourage what we always try to encourage our B Corp community is to reach out to other B Corps that might look like them, that might be in similar sectors, that might be similar size, that are close in the neighborhood, because they probably have the best lessons uh, to share with you. So just again, one of the one of the power, the great powers of the community is that uh, you're not alone. And so encouraging both our panelists, but also any B Corps that might be in the room uh, to really use that resource um, as best as you can. 
Um, we had some really great questions in the chat, um, and I'm gonna get uh, use some artistic license to try to combine them into one. I think one of the one of the questions that has come up repeatedly is around awareness um, of the B Corp movement and why that is important. Uh, I'll preface the question by saying, like, there's definitely a super important critical role of B Lab as an organization to drive growth and awareness of the movement, not just for the sake of awareness, but just for this, this the simple fact that awareness can drive the use of our standards, the use of our tools, and therefore drive larger impact. But I think some of the questions that I was reading in the chat allude to what is the role that the B Corp community itself or you as B Corps can play in growing awareness within each of your markets. So I'm curious if you could give some insights as to how you've experienced that or if you have any uh, perspectives on, on your role in, in, in growing the awareness uh, in your communities. Uh, I think for us in Bulgaria, we're quite a small community. I would like to kind of say a big thank you, especially to Harmonica, who are uh, one of our other B Corp colleagues who have really led the movement of bringing us together as a community. I think there is definitely a strength in numbers. And as we grow, uh, it will be great to promote that. But really, the question that I always have is, it's easy to convince a company that is already dedicated to a social environmental mission to become a B Corp because it makes sense. Where the real challenge comes is when you're trying to convince companies who do not have that embedded into their business model. And at the end of the day, my argument would always be, it has to make business sense in order to be attractive. So where and how do we convince people as a business, it's about choosing our suppliers carefully and also speaking to our clients. As individuals in our business, it's also about making ethical choices as consumers. So I think that's really where we can make an impact and convince more people to move towards ethical, environmental and socially impactful business, uh, the power of the consumer. Yeah. Thank you, Hester. Sarah? Uh, since it's been a long time, well, uh, 12 years now, uh, we share the B Corp movement at our trainings, at our projects, and us as a B Corp, you know, we try to promote it at, at our uh, business cards and our presentations. So, it, you know, it really became a part of our identity and people started, you know, questioning what is this, you know, what does this mean? And, and since we are also at the core of the social innovation, social entrepreneurship ecosystem, uh, the, and, and this is also growing in Turkey for the last like more than 10 years now uh, a very good ecosystem for social innovation is, is growing I think the B Corp movement was kind of uh, in parallel you know because uh, like impact innovation uh, impact entrepreneurship and impact businesses businesses uh, for social good concept is kind of growing and B Corp is kind of you know uh, it fits very well with the uh, new ecosystem. So this is how it grew, and it will it will grow faster, I think. But for companies like Danone in Turkey, when you think when I'm thinking, it's it won't be easy still because uh, because like on sustainability indicators and them becoming more responsible companies in all fields that the B Corp is questioning at its BIA, it really takes a deal. It's not that uh, easy. But for social ones. Uh, smaller and you know, uh, social good oriented companies. It's going to be easier to become a B Corp. This is you know what I see. Yeah, I think for me it's also the power of the movement, right? It's all about in the end, it's about systemic change that we all want to to achieve in one way or another. And I think that the bigger the movement gets and. Um, you know, the more we, we also bundle our power in, in creating this awareness and telling those stories and telling the benefits and showing, you know, what positive effects it has to be a B Corp and, and how we define yeah. the, the new economy. Um, I think uh, at some point, hopefully, we will reach kind of a tipping point as well. Um, so in Austria, for example, we also we have a quite low awareness and we started now in the last few years to, to really talk to 
we had a phased approach to talk to important uh, multipliers, to stakeholders, to politicians, to NGOs. Um, um, Sarah and the team actually also came to Austria last year and we had a big stakeholder event where we had the chance to really introduce the movement again uh, to, to key stakeholders in Austria. Um, and, and I think we still have to, to build that base and at some point and also we obviously want to talk to the consumer, explain to the consumer what is it all about, explain it in a tangible way because it can be quite complex we found so uh, it's really yeah, finding the, this language as well that resonates with the consumer. Um, make it tangible, make it, you know, um, um, so you can experience it as well. Um, and, and um, yeah, I think it's a process and um, I think we're all, all, all working on that and we should, should do that together. And Croatia is a really small country where all the social entrepreneurs kind of know each other. And I'm already being approached by, by our peers who who, uh, who, who want to uh, hear, hear from firsthand about the movement. And uh, there are some candidates that will definitely, I expect, will soon be, be going through the impact assessment. Uh, but about the broader awareness, um, uh, we have this thing that, that, that our company is quite, quite a media favorite in Croatia so it's really really easy for uh, for us to to, uh, to get PR and I uh, I expect that that a lot of people will have Bcor as a household name quite soon in their in their heads uh, uh, because um, yeah because <laughs> we have this we have this power that, that, that we can really 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 push it uh, and, uh, and 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 being so happy with the movement I don't think that we will spare any words about the moment. Yeah, I'm happy about the prospects of Croatia. I, I tell you, there are at least three or four companies that can that can do this quite easily and 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 quite and really grow the community. Thank you so much. And I think um, again, echoing what is said, and actually from our experiences from talking to many many different stakeholders about the movement, uh, we know and we we see time and again that the most effective and powerful message in terms of spreading awareness is from B Corp to B Corp. So uh, companies like to hear from BLAB, but they love to hear from other B Corps. So I think expanding that fear sphere as an investor, like you mentioned, speaking to those you're working directly with and, and using your sphere of influence to communicate the message, I think is is a great, is, yeah, is, is, is really, really, I think one of the most effective ways to drive the, the awareness that we're, we're talking about. And just as a last question, um, I think a lot of what you guys have shared today will have inspired, I hope many people here today to, if they haven't already start their own impact journey. Um, but as we, as we close the session, I was wondering if, if our panelists have a, a word of advice or a piece of advice to other companies or entrepreneurs who are really looking for a way to drive impact within their companies, but are not really sure where to start. Start with the big impact assessment, and and, uh, and uh, maybe you'll be, su be surprised how how well you're doing in some areas, or you'll be inspired of the changes that you can that you can actually implement, and you were not aware of them uh, before. I think it's a good tool to really not just assess your situation, but to grow and to get inspired. From my side, I think it's really about as well, finding your passion, uh, social environmental impact that, that can be so many things. Uh, when you're taking the lead, you need to find something that really matters to you and you can use that as uh, the core to drive things forward what makes sense for your business and then build around it. And then you can start to think about the other areas you can make impact in. I can actually echo that. Uh, I was actually also thinking about passion. Yeah, find something you also have a personal relationship with that helps. Um, and maybe it doesn't really even matter where you start, I think just start somewhere around it, as you said, right? And along the journey, everything becomes clearer because I've, a lot of us, I think, tend to overthink uh, topics and um, it's so easy also to get overwhelmed and you don't know where to start and how to start. And then you think, oh, are the steps I'm taking big enough or not? Is it even worth it? And I, I actually was reading something e really interesting the other day um, that this effect is called analysis paralysis. 
which is something uh, we should not do because then we end up doing nothing. So I think it's, yeah, I would also echo that. Find your passion, find something something you're passionate about um, um, and, and just try to start and then learn along the way. I could maybe maybe include that yeah, since we all want to make an impact, we are learning organizations, so we have to learn and improve ourselves constantly. So and this BIA also helps us do that. And you're not in a hurry. You don't have to uh, submit like in a month. You can just take your time and learn from it. And it gives you space to improve uh, your uh, missing documents, maybe or some missing things. Uh, you know. To get your organization better, you know. Uh, so, um, even if you you are missing some some parts of the BIA, you have time to uh, prepare them, and and then fill it maybe and give yourself some time and learn, improve uh, organizationally, build your capacity a bit, and then maybe uh, submit. Because the submission after the submission, I if I'm right, it takes two years. The certification takes two years. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it would be good to finalize whatever you can in a, sh in a short while and then make the sub submission so that you have a better grade. And it, it, it will take like two years, uh, you know, connotation with your company. Thank you so much. So be passionate, be bold, start somewhere, be patient uh, and measure is what I'm hearing. So uh, I, I'll, I'll definitely take that home with me and I hope the, the audience does as well. Thank you so much to our panelists today for, for being open, for being vulnerable, for sharing your stories. Um, and with that, I will pass on the floor to Helena to uh, wrap our session up. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sarah and all the panelists. It was very inspiring to hear from all of you. And thank you all for joining us today. Um, we just want to share, one of my colleagues will be sharing in the chat, speaking of where to start and uh, start uh, just looking at the BIA, we actually organize very often uh, BMPEC assessment webinars and the next one is happening already this Thursday. So we are just sharing the link in the chat and that's really the best way how to get more familiar. We will go through the BMPEC assessment. My colleague Nico that you heard at the beginning will be moderating it. So we really encourage you to join that and also just to start uh, following us on either social media or just check uh, our website for any more information and any updates that you would like to to know and with that we finish exactly on time so we are we are happy about that as well we thank you so much once again for joining uh hopefully see you again soon and uh, wishing you the nice rest of the week thank you thank you thanks thank everyone you. thank you bye bye, bye. See you see you soon <laughs>